when somebody is suffering, if it's an estrogen deficiency, a progesterone deficiency, testosterone deficiency, we're allowed to supplement in those hormones if we're prescribing doctors. Now, we've got this whole cohort of docs who are, bless them, the chiropractors. I am a chiropractor. I'm also a naturopathic physician, licensed naturopathic physician with a license to prescribe. So I do utilize hormones in my practice and have for decades. I never stopped. Even when the Women's Health Initiative came out with a study showing that oral estrogen and progestins caused issues. And even then it wasn't terribly well done of a study and it wasn't terribly conclusive. They jumped to conclusions. I have been using topical estrogens, which are deemed safe. And we have data to support that. A great, great reference for you is Estrogen Matters. That's a great book that you can go check out if you're scared of estrogen. And Progesterone, which acts differently on the cellular receptors than progestins. So anyway, all that said, if a woman comes to me and she's in her 30s and she's experiencing, say, infertility or miscarriages or heavy menses or headaches or bloating, we're going to run a hormonal panel and I'm going to bet you that she's probably got some low or waning progesterone. In fact, I've rarely seen a normal progesterone level in any woman of any age, to be completely honest with you. So it's a very common deficiency to see. And so we're going to supplement progesterone so that she has nice normal periods that stop making her bleed to death every month, right? We're going to, we're going to see changes in PMS potentially. We're going to see changes in headaches. We're going to see changes in several factors. If we can get that progesterone to a level where it's good for her body and she's feeling well and things are proceeding more normally for her. We don't need to wait for menopause for that to happen. Like that's just, I don't know. That's like dark ages medicine to me. We're also going to do that with thyroid hormone if needed, right? Like if a person is presenting with frank hypothyroid symptoms and labs are only slightly off, I, legally a trial run of thyroid hormone is indicated and we would track and we would stay in close contact and we would make sure that we're not putting them into any symptom pictures with too high of levels. And we make sure that we are getting symptom relief for the chief complaints that they came in with. So that's how I do things in a nutshell. So that's how this type of medicine is done in a nutshell. The thing that gets missed often is estrogen because that really is, even in my mind, I was I was very conservative about handing it out. And it's because I've talked about this on other episodes as well. Estrogen in a body that is metabolically unsound or is carrying around a lot of adipose and in an inflamed state, estrogen goes down funny pathways and it's not as predictable as when we put it into a fit lean person. And that's just what I've seen clinically. I have friends who have worked at many of the labs who have corroborated with me on this and told me that they had the same experience seeing this. In some of these lab companies that are utilizing urine or saliva or blood spot, they're looking at different intricacies in the hormonal panels. And while I know this is not gold standard and serum is gold standard, we sometimes use these to see how hormones are going downstream and how they're being metabolized. This has been corroborated. So Estrogen or testosterone in a body that is not metabolically sound can be a little less predictable. Progesterone's quite safe, although we still want to make sure it's not doing anything funny or causing any symptoms, right? We want to be resolving symptoms, not causing symptoms. So that said, I have been less generous with estrogen prescriptions. And it's been challenging to decide when is the time to give the estrogen because in my case and in several patients I've seen, they sometimes would come in with either weight loss because of stressors that were going on in their life, or maybe they just come out of like an illness, like a, you know, upper respiratory virus that whomped them and they would lose a decent amount of weight and they would come out and people would be like, oh my gosh, you look amazing, but their estrogen had bottomed out. Chronic stress can really do a number on this is a big one. And that's what I probably saw most often was women going through incredibly stressful times. They could have been in their 30s. They could have been in their 40s. They were menstruating regularly, or maybe they were having some difficulty with menstruation, but it was still pretty clockwork. And they were simply just 
on the struggle bus. Now, this doesn't mean that hormonally their ovaries were petering out. It means that their HPA axis was compromised and that things were not proceeding as needed for the body to be in an ideal homeostatic state, and they were experiencing low estrogen symptoms. Conversely, we might see estrogen dominant symptoms and people say, oh, well, they have plenty of estrogen then, you know, their, their symptoms match up with high estrogen. Well, maybe, but maybe not because you can have low estrogen in comparison to your progesterone. The ratio is off because the progesterone is so low that you're now dealing with estrogen dominant symptoms, but they really still have too low of an estrogen. So this can all get very complicated and I'm, I'm not trying to go there with it, but I want you to understand that you can be any age. You're not the TikTok sensation and Instagram online, I'm seeing women in their 30s saying, I'm experiencing premature menopause. Maybe, maybe your system is just fried out and your hormones are all zeroing out. I have experienced this personally and I've seen it countless times. I remember one time running my hormones and getting the lab results back and literally everything was just zeroed out and flatlined. And I was like, oh shit. And I turned the paper over and put it face down and immediately called my ND, my colleague, and said, hey, I need to come in. We got to sort this out. I was under tremendous stress. I was going through a divorce. My dog had just been hit by a car and lost a leg. She had spent a week uh, on the run before that. So I, this was also during finals week where I was in two medical programs concurrently taking finals from both schools, driving across town. It, it was crazy. And I was dealing with walking pneumonia and I was about 115 pounds. So it's like 20, 25 pounds lighter than I am now. And it was terrible and I had no hormones and my breasts were deflated. My face was droopy and saggy. My labia was deflated. I mean, everything was deflated on me. My tissues were sort of sagging off of me and I felt awful and I had no tolerance bands for anything. All I wanted to do was cry and sleep. I didn't want to eat. I was just absolutely bottomed out. That was not premature menopause. That was my HPA axis getting hammered. My mitochondria were probably getting hammered. I wasn't making any hormones to the levels that I needed because all systems were gone awry. This happens. And so I don't want you to jump into the sensation, you know, this whole online sensation of young women screaming premature menopause or screaming, I have estrogen dominance. It's like, they understand this much of the iceberg, right? They're just understanding the very tippy top. And then they, you know, the inmates start running the asylum. So I'm here to tell you that you can have transient hormonal lapses. And I believe clinically, and this is not medical advice, but I believe clinically that is the time to go talk to somebody who knows what they're doing and consider physiologic doses of hormone replacement if indicated for you as an individual deemed by your health professional who knows what they're doing. You're not going to get this out of your general GP. You're going to get this out of probably a functional medicine doctor or a more holistic doctor. And I know there's endocrinologists out there screaming right now. And I know there's people having a fit. I see it all the time online. They come at me, but I'm telling you, if somebody's hormones are bottomed out, another example would be a young man who's had excessive head injuries, maybe due to hockey or due to surfing or due to football. I've seen all of the above. And these guys come in in their 30s and they have no testosterone and they are plagued with symptoms. They've got chronic pain. They've got migraines. They've got all kinds of issues and they can't sleep. They can't eat. They can't put on muscle. They can't heal well. These guys have been had their heads knocked in enough that they're, now their testosterone's low. So that's just an example. There's all different types, but it is my clinical belief that it is indicated per individual assessment that those patients could potentially benefit from some transient or maybe even cyclical long-term hormone replacement, depending on what their needs are as an individual after assessment.